Aerogel. It's the lightest material on earth. It's extremely versatile and it has the potential to change the way we live. I've been waiting to get my hands on these Aspen Aerogel samples for a really long time. This video is going to be a simplified introduction to the material because I'm still wrapping my head around how it's made. We're going to cover the manufacturing process, its properties and many uses. There are many different types of aerogel. The most common is silica aerogel. The manufacturing process starts with four main ingredients. Tetramethoxysilane or tetramethyl orthosilicate or TMOS. It consists of four methoxy groups bonded to one silicon atom. They are evenly spaced in three dimensions, making it a stable compound. Methanol, a volatile, colorless, flammable liquid that acts as a co-solvent. Deionized water, which is treated to remove all positive and negative ions. Ammonium hydroxide, which is a basic catalyst that speeds up reactions. We need water to react with TMOS, but they are both stable. To facilitate this reaction, we have to add ammonium hydroxide and methanol to water to make a catalyst solution and add methanol to TMOS to make an alkoxide solution. Both solutions are then mixed in a beaker that has a magnetic stir bead at the bottom. When TMOS reacts with water, the methoxy group is replaced with the hydroxide group. Polymerization begins and silica or silicon dioxide is formed. The silica slowly thickens to form a sol, which are solid nanoparticles dispersed in a liquid. This sol is taken out of the beaker and poured into molds to set and form a gel. This gel is a continuous 3D network of silica in liquid water. The gel forms soak in methanol for several days to form an alcogel. Methanol displaces all the water in the pores and flushes out any impurities. In the final stage, the alcogel is placed in a pressure vessel where the pressure can reach a hundred times atmospheric pressure. Liquid carbon dioxide is pumped into the pressure vessel and heated to the supercritical point where it can either be a gas or a liquid. The carbon dioxide extracts the methanol in the pores and slowly dries out the gel. Conventional or just regular evaporation would have caused the solid silica to collapse. This final stage converts the alcogel into aerogel. A simple explanation is that aerogel is a solid gel with air pockets instead of water. It can actually be made of many different materials, not just silicon dioxide. RF or resorcinol formaldehyde polymer aerogel is composed of the same material as the plastic bakelite. They are deep red in color. Chromia or chromium oxide aerogel is deep blue and opaque. Cadmium sulfide aerogel is yellow and opaque. Iron oxyhydroxide aerogel is yellow. Nickel oxide aerogel is greenish. Iron oxide aerogel is rust red and opaque. Carbon aerogel is made by dehydrating RF aerogels. They are black in color and have a very high surface area. We'll discuss this material in another video. Now let's go over some of the properties of silica aerogel. First off, it's classified as nanotechnology. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? This is a branch of technology that deals with dimensions and tolerances of less than 100 nanometers. The nanopores in aerogel are invisible to the naked eye, about 3,000 to 30,000 times smaller than the diameter of a strand of hair. They open up a whole new realm of possibilities, such as nanomedicine, nanoelectronics, biomaterial energy production, and consumer products. The second is its insulating properties. I tested this out with tiny chocolate chips. I placed one directly on a tray and another on a small piece of aerogel. I used a heat gun underneath the tray. Within seconds, the chocolate chip on the tray started to melt and smoke, but the other chocolate chip was intact. At the end of the experiment, the aerogel was cool to touch, but the chocolate was still hot. The solids in silica aerogel are just 3% of the total volume. The remaining 97% is air, which has very little room to move, so it essentially acts like trapped air. 
Aerogel prevents conduction, which is the transfer of heat through direct contact. And it also prevents convection, which is the transfer of heat through movement of liquid or gas. These properties make Aerogel an excellent insulator. It has an R value of R20 per inch of thickness compared to R3.5 for fiberglass and R4 for EPS foam. The next property is its color. When visible light hits the surface of aerogel, it is scattered by the tiny pores. Blue light, which has the shortest wavelength, is scattered more, giving aerogel its smoky blue color against dark backgrounds and yellowish color against white backgrounds. This is called Rayleigh scattering and is the same phenomenon that causes the sky to appear blue. Ultraviolet light has an even shorter wavelength than blue light, so it makes aerogel look opaque. Infrared light has the longest wavelength, so it makes aerogel look transparent. Aerogel monoliths are very expensive. They cost about a dollar per cubic centimeter or $23,000 per pound, making it more expensive than gold. Since it's mainly made of air, aerogel is very fragile. You can see hairline cracks in this piece when it's held up to a light. It easily fragments and pulverizes. Silica aerogel is not toxic in small amounts. It has very small fibers that can be naturally expelled, unlike quartz fiber or asbestos. It can also be easily washed off your skin with soap and water. However, inhaling large amounts of silica dust can cause irritation to your throat and your lungs. Silica aerogel is naturally hydrophilic. It attracts water. An ice cube piece of aerogel contains half a football field of surface area, making it a tiny sponge that can absorb 25 times its weight in water. The OH or hydroxyl group attracts water, fills the nanopores and makes the aerogel useless. However, it can be treated with hydrophobic or water-repelling compounds to make the aerogel waterproof. Aerogel is also oleophilic, which means that it has a strong affinity for oil. This happened when I poured olive oil over the sample. So, it can both repel water and absorb it. It allows vapor to pass through, but it can stop water. It readily absorbs oils. The thermal drift or loss of R value over time is negligible. It is mainly made of trapped air and hardly any solid, so it doesn't impact the environment negatively. It is non-toxic to humans and animals, and it doesn't off-gas. Seems like it can do everything, right? Now, let's discuss some of the many applications of silica aerogel. Aerogel insulation offers the highest R value per inch of any insulating material, like we discussed earlier. Thermal wrap aerogel blankets are used in historic preservation where space is very limited. They are vapor open, so they allow water vapor in the wall to evaporate. Old buildings were built differently. They were meant to breathe. Using closed cell spray foam in these historic buildings would be disastrous. Open cell spray foam would work technically, but it sticks to the siding and it's very difficult to remove. It can cause serious damage to the structure of these buildings. Aspen Aerogels has a product named Space Loft Subsea, which are flexible blankets filled with fiber reinforced aerogel. These are used to insulate subsea pipelines. A one centimeter thick blanket provides the same insulating properties as three centimeters or one inch of fiberglass or mineral wool. The hydrophilic nature of silica aerogel allows it to absorb moisture in the air and control the relative humidity in museums and library exhibitions. NASA uses aerogel to capture comet dust, which moves at speeds six times faster than the speed of a rifle bullet. Other materials would have caused the dust particles to heat up and possibly evaporate. NASA is also using aerogels on the InSight mission to Mars. It's used to insulate and protect electronics on the rovers since they absorb moisture at low pressures. Aerogel can also be used to clean up oil spills, since they are much more effective than the booms, skimmers, and centrifuges that are currently used. Aerogels can absorb oil 237 times its weight. Cryogel blankets are used for insulating cold temperature environments, minus 330 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 200 degrees Celsius. At the other end of the spectrum, 
pyrogel blankets can be used in extremely hot environments, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit or 650 degrees Celsius. It's even breaking into the clothing market. L.L. Bean's Prima Loft jackets have an aerogel infill. They are lightweight and can be packed into a small case. You can also find aerogel gloves and aerogel insoles. Like I said at the start of this video, I'm still wrapping my head around this material. It seems like a hypothetical invention that Tony Stark would create. I'm going to make some follow-up videos on carbon aerogel or graphene as well as the specific uses of aerogel in construction. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. There's no guarantee I'll be able to answer it though. Also, if you're interested in any other construction related topics, leave me a message. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.